So we don't know where the laws of nature came from. We don't know why the universe began in the way that it did, uh, if indeed it had a beginning. How did everything start? What was there before the Big Bang? Why did the Big Bang occur? It's a question that many ponder, and despite diligent efforts, science lacks a fully convincing answer supported by measurable data. The Big Bang is viewed as the beginning of our universe, but what if this theory is no longer valid? Brian Cox has recently spoken out after the significant James Webb telescope discovery, suggesting that the Big Bang might not have occurred. If the Big Bang theory is incorrect, what event initiated our universe? Let's find out. Scientists inform us that 13.75 billion years ago, the universe commenced. The reason? Remains unknown. Queries about what transpired before the Big Bang linger unanswered. Nevertheless, it's prudent to contemplate the most significant inquiries and assess our current position. Yet, we must acknowledge that this question intertwines science and religion profoundly, if not in practice, at least historically. Many religious traditions, past and present, possess narratives describing the origins of everything, a creation myth. These stories hold significance as they detail the inception of all things, attributed to a deity or deities or a process defying natural workings. To grapple with the complex matter of the first cause, creation myths introduce an absolute being, a cause beyond the regular operations of the world, beyond space and time, and beyond the chain of causation defining our material existence. It made sense in times predating scientific understanding. How else could one explain the world's existence? Creation myths serve a societal purpose, establishing power hierarchies that bind tribal morals and define a shared creed's value system. In Genesis 1, when God is first introduced, it's evident that he's portrayed as the creator, all-knowing and ever-present. Although beyond this world there's a pervasive and imminent presence, manifesting itself in mysterious ways. The universe's age, measured at 13.8 billion years, is a factual observation. However, this doesn't negate the possibility of maintaining a spiritual or religious perspective. One can still believe in God or gods. Various religious cultures offer diverse creation narratives, often involving supernatural deities initiating the creative process, marking the inception of time. These stories typically follow a linear time structure, commencing at some point in the past. For instance, the Maori of New Zealand proposed that the world spontaneously emerged without the involvement of an active deity, originating from an ineffable urge to exist. Conversely, traditions from China and India recount the beginning as an egg in nothingness, cracking to give rise to the world and its diverse forms. In alternative creation tales, such as a pre-200 BCE Taoist myth, the cosmos autonomously unfolds, with order arising from its dynamic interplay with chaos. The Hindu myth, featuring the dancing Shiva, uses the god's choreography to depict cycles of creation and destruction, symbolizing the cosmos emerging and collapsing endlessly within the vastness of time. Meanwhile, the Jains, also from India, eliminate the concept of creation entirely, proposing that time lacks a distinct beginning or end. These cyclic time or no-time narratives constitute the five archetypes of creation. In the realm of science, the inquiry into the origin of everything has resurfaced prominently in modern cosmology research. The majority of mathematical frameworks addressing this question were formulated in the 20th century with Einstein's theory of general relativity. The core concept revolves around the idea that matter influences the curvature of space. Therefore, by understanding or effectively modeling the matter present in space, we can solve equations related to its geometry, potentially unveiling the origin and destiny of the cosmos. To address this question comprehensively, let's distinguish three frequently intermingled aspects and discuss each, the hot Big Bang, concerning our universe, the concept of cosmic or cosmological inflation, and its progression leading to the Big Bang, and the inquiry into an ultimate beginning or origin of our universe. Both inflation and the original notion of the Big Bang 
falls short of providing a satisfying answer to this question. In the early 20th century, a convergence of four crucial pieces of information, one theoretical and three observational, occurred in a revolutionary manner. The theoretical insight presented by Alexander Friedman within the framework of Einstein's general relativity revealed that a universe uniformly filled with any form of matter and energy cannot remain static and stable. It must either expand or contract with the rate dictated by the overall energy density of space. On the observational front, Henrietta Leavitt established a correlation between the period of brightening and dimming Cepheid variable stars and their intrinsic brightness, known as the period luminosity relation. Observationally, Vesto Melvin Slipher measured the shift in light, either red or blue, from our solar system's frame of reference within spiral and elliptical nebulae, even before recognizing them as galaxies. He determined that these celestial bodies must be moving away from Wuss at remarkably high speeds, reaching up to thousands of kilometers per second. Subsequently, Edwin Hubble, accompanied by Milton Humason, identified variable stars, similar to those pinpointed by Henrietta Leavitt, with a period luminosity relationship in these nebulae. This enabled the measurement of their distances, confirming their extragalactic nature. Integrating these pieces of information led to the concept of an expanding universe. If the universe expands, what does this suggest for the future? It implies that as space expands, the matter within the universe becomes less concentrated due to a fixed number of particles. As space expands, the volume it occupies continues to grow, resulting in a decrease in overall density over time. For radiation, such as photons or light waves, not only does it become less concentrated, but the stretching of space causes the energy of each light wave to spread, leading to the universe not only expanding and diluting, but also cooling. However, considering the matter and radiation in reverse, running the clock backward in time, reveals precisely the opposite conditions would have occurred. In its earlier stages, the universe would have been both denser and hotter. Tracing back in time reveals that all matter and radiation would have occupied a smaller volume, increasing the overall density of the universe. The light, affected by cosmic expansion, would have had a shorter wavelength in the past, resulting in hotter conditions and elevated temperatures. If you envision going back to the utmost limit defined by the laws of physics, you'd reach a singular state where all matter and radiation exist within a single point of infinite density and temperature. This concept forms the original idea behind the Big Bang, exploring the physical dynamics of how matter and energy interact in this early, hot, dense environment, led to five fundamental predictions of the theory. Firstly, the universe should exhibit expansion, demonstrating a clear redshift distance relationship among extragalactic objects. Secondly, the universe is presumed to have initiated in a somewhat uniform state, with cosmic structures such as stars, galaxies, groups, clusters of galaxies, and a large-scale cosmic web gradually forming and expanding over time. Thirdly, the universe was hotter in its distant past, reaching a point where neutral atoms couldn't stably form, leading to the anticipation of a relic low-temperature, omnidirectional black body spectrum, the cosmic microwave background, that persists today. Fourthly, the universe was once so hot in the distant past that even atomic nuclei couldn't stably form, resulting in the expected relative abundances of light elements like hydrogen, helium, lithium, and their various isotopes, all originating in the crucible of the early universe. Finally, the universe should have been sufficiently hot in the past for neutrinos to play a crucial cosmic role leading to a fifth prediction that has recently been confirmed. These cosmic neutrinos should leave detectable imprints in both the large-scale structure and the lingering radiation from the Big Bang. With robust observational backing for all five predictions, the Big Bang remains uncontested as our primary theory of the early universe, a status it has held since the mid-1960s when the cosmic microwave background was initially detected. However, 
even as evidence supporting the hot Big Bang accumulated in the 1960s and 1970s. Puzzles also surfaced, observations that the Big Bang itself couldn't elucidate. For instance, if the universe originated from a singular state with arbitrarily high temperatures and densities, then there are at least three observations that defy straightforward explanations. First, the horizon problem. When we gaze in various directions, the universe appears with the same temperature and density everywhere. Yet, regions couldn't communicate or balance conditions since the hot Big Bang. How did they synchronize without exchanging information? Second, the flatness problem in an expanding universe. Initial expansion and gravitational forces vie for dominance. Our universe oddly shows a perfect balance, resulting in a spatially flat state. Why did it start with these specific properties? Third, the monopole or ancient relic problem. If the universe had extreme temperature and energy, where are the expected exotic relics like right-handed neutrinos and magnetic monopolies? We might just chalk it up to initial conditions, but that contradicts the scientific pursuit. Instead, in 1980, Alan Guth proposed a solution. An early phase of rapid exponential expansion, where the universe's energy was intrinsic to space itself, could address all three problems. The uniform temperature and density stem from past causally connected events stretched apart during this expansion. The apparent flatness results from inflation stretching things to appear flat from our perspective. No ancient relics exist because the universe didn't reach extremely high energies, just the maximum after the end of inflation. By offering an explanation for three key observations, Inflation emerged as a robust alternative to the conventional hot Big Bang model. Once challenges were overcome to demonstrate how an isotropic homogeneous early universe could be restored post-inflation, a clear insight emerged. Inflation could serve as a quantum mechanism for introducing initial imperfections or the origins of cosmic structure into the universe. These imperfections would eventually become observable in detail. In the 1980s, inflation generated testable predictions regarding the seeds of cosmic structure, manifesting in both the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale structure of the universe. Additionally, it imposed a cutoff for a maximum temperature, expected to be well below the Planck scale. Observations from the 1990s to the present confirmed these predictions, revealing a spectrum of imperfections density, and temperature fluctuations that exhibit almost, though not perfectly, scale invariance. The density imperfections are 100% adiabatic and 0% isocurvature. Fluctuations on superhorizon scales surpassing the speed of light in an expanding universe could establish a finite maximum temperature during the hot Big Bang, significantly smaller than the Planck scale. Inflation, with its exponential expansion, contrasts with the original Big Bang model's singularity, painting a distinct picture of the beginning, a swift expansion leading to a Big Bang, rather than the emergence of time and space from a singular state. Now, let's delve into the profound question. What implications does all this hold for the true origin of the universe, assuming such a concept even exists? When we focus solely on the hot Big Bang without inflation, we could extrapolate backward to a singular state where the universe's size would approach zero in a finite time frame. However, inflation, with its exponential space expansion, makes it impossible to extrapolate back to a singularity. Exponentially, it would require an infinite amount of time to regress to a state with a universe of zero size. Complicating matters, Observable evidence for inflation involving quantum fluctuations imprinted on our visible universe is confined to the final roughly 100 doublings before inflation concludes. This corresponds to a mere time period of about the last 10 trons or 32 seconds before inflation ends, leading to the hot Big Bang. If we entertain the idea of postponing a singular beginning to an earlier epoch, inflation dashes that hope. No observable evidence sheds light on what, if anything, triggered inflation. One intriguing aspect is eternal inflation, where virtually any working model of inflation causing our universe to expand 
also predicts an eternal inflationary state due to quantum fluctuations. While inflation concludes in certain regions, leading to a hot big bang like ours, infinitely more regions experience perpetual inflation. However, eternal inflation has limits. It extends only into the future, not the past. Inflationary space-times are not past timelike complete and must have emerged from a prior non-inflationary state. Alternatives like bouncing or cyclic cosmologies face similar challenges. Yet, even with these constraints, it doesn't conclusively dictate a singularity as the universe's origin. A past timelike complete space-time with inflation can be designed without relying on a singularity. Despite the hot Big Bang offering the best description of our early universe, it wasn't the absolute beginning. Cosmic inflation preceded it, where space was filled with energy, not matter and radiation, expanding relentlessly in an exponential manner. However, inflation couldn't have persisted indefinitely and must have originated from a pre-existing non-inflationary state, about which we can say very little. Scientific narratives encounter difficulty explaining the first cause due to the inherent nature of science, requiring a conceptual framework. While progress has been made and various models proposed, the question of why something exists rather than nothing remains unanswered. Whether one turns to religious faith, believes in science's ultimate conquest, or embraces the limits of our knowledge with humility, the mystery persists. Curiosity without mystery is blind, and mystery without curiosity is lame. As we celebrate what we've achieved, the unknown continues to inspire wonder. That's the extent of the information we have for you today. If you liked today's episode, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell to stay updated on future episodes. Share your thoughts on today's content. Your support keeps us motivated to provide quality content and make continuous improvements. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next episode.